Okay, now live. Uh, welcome to our Ubuntu on our session for the final release. Is Jose? Um, I'm an Ubuntu member from Peru. And welcome to our next Ubuntu on our session. We're happy to see you here. All right, cool. And I'm your other co-host. I'm George Castro. I'm on the Canonical community team, and my job is to find interesting people for you guys to ask questions. We've had. Um, a bunch of people in these, and we finally got Neil Patel to come on after kind of bailing on us a few times, but this time we're able to trap you since since the release uh, is out. Yeah, and we're joined by... Uh, this guy. Hello, I'm Joe Elijah Sneddon, editor of OMG Ubuntu. All right, so we'll get started. <laughs> uh, why, don't, why don't you introduce yourself, Neil? And, sure. Uh, so... Um, Neil Patel, I'm a system architect at Product Strategy. Uh, I've been with Canonical like for four and a half, near five years, been in the Ubuntu community about six, seven years. Um, started off with AWN, Avant Window Navigator, did some work on Tracker and tons of different things, and currently work, well, I'm the lead for Unity as well, so, yeah. Cool. Um, so I'll start off with a question. Um, how long have Unity previews, which is a new feature in Ubuntu 12.10, how long has that kind of been in gestation? How long have we been wanting to do that? Yeah, so I mean, the idea, I think, has been around for, uh, let's say, about a year or so. And it's the, the idea of the dash wasn't enough. You know, there's so many things that, the other things that each uh, lens or scope wanted to raise up to the user or surface to the user, and it just wasn't possible with just a single click approach. So we knew we needed to do something. Um, I think the way the previews look now and things like that, that really came together near the start of the cycle, to be honest, before they were a bit clunky, et cetera, at least in the mock-ups and stuff. So um, I think it came together in the tightness and stuff at the start of the cycle, and then we've just been working on it. So like, if you think about the back ends and stuff like that, it's LibUnity, for instance. We had already thought about how we were going to integrate it and stuff like that. So there wasn't anything new there or challenges in that sense. It was just about, OK, we need to get that piece done and the front end stuff done and try and make it accessible and flexible, you know? Not everyone can go in and create a new preview easily. It's a problem we'd like to solve, but initially it's hard. So we wanted to keep it flexible. So, you know, you've got people like David Calais, et cetera, who are in the community, they're building all these lenses and scopes. And like, I can't guess what he's going to do because it's, it's incredible the type of ideas he has. So yeah, so the flexibility was key there. Was it quite difficult to technically build in Um, sorry, uh, no, so I mean, in the back end side it wasn't that hard, but in the front end side with the dash, etc., um, it does, like everything when we have that type of UI change, there's always like um, some bootstrapping that needs to be done and that takes a bit of time. So I think the main concern was they landed too late for um, for us this cycle, but um, that was just, there was many reasons for that, not just specifically that they were specifically hard to do or anything like that. Um, one thing that I really like about them is the animations, the way it kind of, do you have a name for that? The way it... <laughs> it's just the split like, animation or something. Split. Yeah. I mean, yeah. was that... The word chameleonic anywhere in there? That seems to be... <laughs> is, chameleonic I animation. don't know. <laughs> Jay calls it the split animation. And right. he's been people always ask me what we call those things, and it's like, yeah. we don't really have a name. And they're like, come on, you're an engin you're engineers. Yeah. You have to have names for that. So we're kind of yeah. hoping you can lay, lay, lay names to us. Uh, OK. So um, no, no, no. It's just literally, um, it's like the spread, split animation or something like that. Just give me two seconds. I need to move from this space, because everyone's about okay. to start a meeting here, and you're going to know all of the secrets about Canonical one minute. <laughs> I really want to stay watching. Why can't yeah, I stay kind of want to know what's going on, too. <laughs> but, um, if, if you're just joining us on the stream, uh, UbuntuOnAir.com, go ahead and start asking your questions in the comments, and we'll go ahead and, and uh, feed them to Neil for you. We've already got one or two, so keep them coming, and uh, we'll do our best to get through as many questions. As well. So just keep them coming. Hey. And he's All back. Right. And oh, please don't forget to follow at UbuntuOnAir on Twitter. That's our Twitter account. So, if you've got like a Twitter account, follow us. We're, we'll be posting all of our dates. 
Can you check the stream? Can you check the stream? It's uh, it looks like it's not displaying on the page. Okay. Maybe that's why people aren't watching. Stand by. He's gone again. I think he's video muted. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, hold on. We're, we're checking the feed on the on the actual Ubuntu on Air page. Sure. Do you guys get a video that's not existing? Do, we updated the URL, right? Okay, let me let me just re-update it. Yeah, because I'm getting a video. It doesn't like, exist. Yeah. Neil, get ready to start all okay, over. Okay, I'm updating. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was rehearsal. It gets it good. It gets it up. <sighs> Did anyone say anything secret? Sorry? Did anyone say anything secret? No, I just got the looks from them, like, we know what you're doing and you shouldn't be here. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Seriously, it's like the kitchen. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, everyone. Sorry about that. We started but didn't check to see if we were broadcasting. Now we are broadcasting. So hopefully, sorry about the technical glitch. Ubuntu on Air is now streaming. Welcome to Ubuntu on Air. This is where we grab interesting people from the Ubuntu community, and you can just leave them questions and we harass them and generally ask questions about what they work on and stuff. Um, I'm one of your co-hosts, George Castro. I'm joined by Jose. Hey, guys. And Joey from OMG Ubuntu. Hello. Wow. It was a lot better when we rehearsed it. And uh, today we have Neil Patel, <laughs> who's, been, who's uh, the system architect at Project Strategy at Canonical, a.k.a. tech lead guy for Unity. You were kind of avoiding me all cycle, but now the cycle's over. So you before me. you get started on the next bling, we decided to sit you down and grill you a little bit about Unity and some questions and things like that. And hopefully later on we'll get joined by Ivanka Magic from the design team. Um, you know, that way if you, someone asks you a question, you can just blame her. Yeah, try it's to get a we, dependency tree in here. so that It's what the engineers do. I'm telling yeah, you it's exactly, fine. Exactly. I want you to start off with what you do, and then Joey's going to go ahead and start uh, start... Uh, start with the questions, and sure. then I'll go ahead and, and I'll monitor Facebook and UbuntuOnAir.com and all these places for your questions. So just post them somewhere, and we'll we'll get them to Neil as fast as we can and try to get through as many of these as we can. So take it away, Joey. Um, hello, Neil. What do you do? Okay. okay. Um, so I'm, as uh, George said, I'm system architect at Canonical. I'm product strategy. So basically. I'm involved in everything that product strategy do. Um, design from when the designers come out with something to how it's going to be implemented and get into Ubuntu basically. So I'm in different stages of the process. But um, before that, I was the tech lead for Unity. Um, we, my team started it, we got it into Ubuntu, we maintained it, et cetera. Um, and yeah, I mean, before that, it was Ubuntu Netbook Remix, I think. Um, and uh, that was like while I was initially last five years or so at Canonical. And uh, before that, I was part of the Ubuntu community. And I, used, I started and worked on uh, Avant Window Navigator, AWM. So yeah, Unity was like, it made sense <laughs> to go from there to Is it fair to call you the father of Unity? <laughs> <laughs> I used to be called the godfather of Unity. What the hell? Godfather of Unity. I'm uh, going to use that. I forgot um, you did the you did the old netbook interface too. You did the yeah the EFL one, right? Right, right. So we, we I mean, it started off with um, some bits and pieces for Dell, and then um, you know we wanted to do something out with our own um, image and our own ideas, and and UNR started off, and um, yeah, Unity just grew from there. To be honest, like for a long time, you shared so much of the base code as well, but the move to comp is like gave it like the second win basically. So that was a re-architecture, redone. 
And in 12.10, there are uh, several new Unity features, one of which is um, previews, which lets you left-click on um, an application icon or a um, file icon to get a preview. Um, how long is how, how long have previews kind of been in gestation? How long have you been wanting to do that? Yeah, so I mean, previews have been, um, I guess, in our minds for like over a year probably, just because we quickly figured out the kind of things people were doing with the Dash, including the things we wanted to do with the Dash, just presenting a result and only having one way, to, you know, one action from that result was never going to be enough. So um, we knew we wanted something. It had different forms, like um, now I'm remembering, <laughs> there was like one of them was just a simple context menu and the rest were bars that would just pop up and things like that. But I think the real, the, the, the way we know previews now and the way they surface that extra information and those extra actions, that, that came about in like, I'd say six to eight months ago. And that kind of give, gave us the, that gave us the confidence to go ahead and say, you know what, this is worth having. So we did the work afterwards and got it in. Was it difficult building uh, something like that into the dash? something that was formerly sort of just static? I mean, did, did that require a lot of work on the back end or anything? Yeah, so I mean, the back end side was, um, so we, because we had an idea that we wanted to present this type of information, although the UI wasn't really set for some time, um, internally the back end and the APIs to deal with it, they were in our minds and we were, we were in a good place with regards to that for quite some time, for a couple of releases, you could say. But yeah, once we, when we saw the mock-ups for um, how the previews look now, and the especially the the way the animation works, etc., um, initially it was like, ah, damn, okay. <laughs> so we had to look into um, you know freeing up the dash, as it were. And actually, the work that we did on the previews, getting that animation in, it's given us like. Um, it's given us what we need, the tool set that we need, even inside the toolkit we use, to go ahead and continue to do those types of improvements inside 1304 as well, because we want everything to be malleable. We want the interface to be able to move around, shift around, etc. And yeah, so it was, it was a bit scary initially, but we got there, and now it's given us exactly what we need to continue. Are there often times when the design team come to you and say, do this, and you look at it and say, uh, but we can't. I mean, is there kind of like a tension between the two camps? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that initially it was more so, and like, if you have, say, a new designer come in and then they're like, you know, they've been dealing with the web, say, a lot, and initially they, they make something and they're like, all right, this is what I need. And you, you, for us, it's like, oh my God, we need to do this, this. And it's other considerations as well. Like, for, an, for instance, you might have a great animation, but it might really critically rely on blur. Otherwise, it just doesn't look right, or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You can't read anything, etc. But blur for Ubuntu is very different than blurring something quickly on the web or for Windows, etc. You know, it doesn't work everywhere. So it's a lot of back and forth. And the thing is, is just over the years we've just got better at that and having those conversations. And now the designers, they can like I when I'm in the office, I can see them. They look at something and they're like, actually, you know what? To get that done, it seems like a few weeks' work. So <laughs> they're getting done. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, we have a few incoming questions here, Neil. Um, cool. I'll basically intersperse user questions in with yours, Joey. Um, yep. Herman Araos, I hope I pronounced that right, asks, will Unity 1210 work fine with ATI drivers, especially ATI 3000 series? Thanks. Great job. Maybe you can expand on Unity's <laughs> relationship with graphic drivers and generally how, like, how you guys test on different... Yeah. So, I mean, specifically on that chipset, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but um, what we've done, so when we first landed Unity, like the majority of people know that the troubles with traffic, graphics drivers at that time were huge, you know? Mm -hmm. um, doing a blur was just like, oh my God, you really want to do that? And in something which you're not going to kill straight away because it was leaking memory like crazy, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the things with Unity was we managed to speak to the graphics driver vendors. We managed to speak to the people writing the drivers as well, even if it was open source. And we got an idea and we started getting them to see why those certain things were important and they improved. Um, we still, I mean, it's nothing, you can't say it's ever fixed because the fact that he's pointing out whether it works better on that goes to show that there were issues with that, you know, um, at the time. But it's, for instance, every change we do to Unity, we test it across multiple dra um, graphics cards now, actually the real hardware um, in our QA labs. And it's just, it, it gives us, 
it, we've got to a point where we got Unity working on a whole broad set of uh, graphics cards and drivers. And we really don't want to regress on that as much as possible. Now, there's so many of them, you can't guarantee that's going to happen. But I think we've got better over time at handling that situation. Um, and I think the graphics, the graphics drivers themselves are better. You know, um, a lot of the graphics, for instance, um, like a year ago, a lot of the drivers would report functionality which they just didn't support. So, you know, for instance, the ATI one might report that it does, it can handle certain type of shaders, etc. You go and do it, and you get a crash. And all of that comes back down to Unity, that Unity is doing this wrong, etc. But mm -hmm. over the reports that everyone's given, so thank you for that, but also taking those, showing them to the vendors and saying, hey, you really need to report the right things, that's helped um, Unity. And I think, other, you know, it's going to help you, you know, we've got... You've got Steam announcing that they want to come onto Ubuntu. You've got so many different people that want to come onto Ubuntu, and those types of things are really important for them because they're not—they're less likely to ha know how to tackle these problems like we can. You know, going to the right people, etc. They just—if a driver says it does something, they're kind of going to expect it to actually do that thing. So, mm. yeah. So, so speaking about Steam and stuff, I know that we've um, Unity and specifically Compass has taken some criticisms for regressing yeah. lately in the last few releases as far as performance. Um, can you can you talk about I know I know that Valve is a vendor and you know we're treading on dangerous ground here, but um, is I mean is, is that something that your team is aware of? Like that Yeah, you know, yeah. So I mean like, you know, Steam is finally coming into Linux. Don't screw me, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean uh, Steam is I mean one of them, but realistically um, any of those, anything that's using OpenGL, especially in full screen, needs a little bit of hand holding, holding basically by the window manager, because just the way X works, just the way compositors work in X, etc. So we are working on that. We are making sure that um, even if you're an application, say you're Blender, it doesn't matter. It's the same problem. You know, those guys want to be able to say, look, I'm full screen. I don't need you to do anything at this point. You know, notifications don't need to show up. I don't need anything Unity. I just need to render to the screen as fast as possible. And we're working on that both in a sense of some automatic bits and pieces where we can detect that this is the right thing to do. But also I think some of this, what I'd like to see this is, is I'd like that to see this as like a shell state, you know, for an application to be able to say, hey, this is what I am. If you're declaring what you are, we can totally deal with you in a better way and give the user a better experience. So I think that would be a great way to go, basically. So however that manifests, it doesn't need to be a full-on API. It could just be an X property or something like that. But definitely working with all of those guys, but also people already who've been in open source and writing games or writing OpenGL applications all this time, just making sure we can figure something out. And then, yeah, we can support it. Hopefully, um, Mutter, et cetera, also supports it. So we just solve it once and for all. How far along sort of is, is that work? When, when can users start expecting to see some benefits of that kind of approach? So, um, so unredirecting full screen uh, windows is an option in the compass that's already in um, uh, Quantal. But I think it is a bit shaky still. So it's something on for the 1304 cycle. So you'll start seeing it stable, random bugs being fixed, et cetera, during that cycle. Speaking of, this segues to our next set. We've got three of the same questions, and I know a lot of people have been asking about this. Um, Unity seems to take a lot of graphic power, even in 2D. Is there a plan to reduce the graphical needs? Um, and we've had some questions about the deprecation of 2D and using LLVM pipe. Um, then adds, lots of ARM-based graphics drivers are missing, in CP and the CPU is not that powerful, and yet we're offloading that work to the CPU. Sure. Can you kind of talk about a little bit of what, what you're doing for people with older computers and ARM? And yeah, so I mean, the first, it's realistically, it's not something which we could, just because of the work we already had planned for um, 1210, it's just not something we could have done perfectly by in, in six months. So we did, we've landed the first bits of that. So right now, Unity detects that it's on software rendering or LLVM pipe or whatever. Also, there's an environmental variable which you can use to switch, force it into this mode. Um, oh, really? Which, what is it? Uh, Unity underscore low underscore GFX underscore mode equals one, all in capitals. Um, 
Okay. And then if, yeah, if you restart Unity, you'll see it um, go into this mode. So anyway, I mean, this mode, what it does is basically it tries to reduce the amount of blending, the amount of, it just does not even try to start any form of blur or anything like that. Now, the, the work to just have this in peace, have this inside of Unity, somewhere where any part of Unity to go and check what it's running on was like the core amount of work that we wanted to land. The nice thing is it landed with, as I said, the dash now completely opaque. So it's not causing extra blending or anything like that. Um, or blur switched off for launcher, dash panel, quick list, everything. Um, so that was the first bits. But now we have that in. What we can start doing is basically unpicking the rest of the other parts of Unity which are causing um, issues. So for one of them, for instance, is the launcher. The launcher is very complicated in its rendering. And it wasn't used, so it works fine on NVIDIA, Intel, etc. but it wasn't, it's not the most performant it could be. And so, at, you know, our, one of the engineers, Nick DeFay, is working on adding texture, texture atlas support, which means it will render what it needs to once, and that's it. Afterwards, it will just be picking up the exact icon it needs, the exact type of um, state of the icon, etc. So that's going to be a huge improvement for normal users as well as people on LLVM pipe or load systems. So we, I mean, we are looking at it seriously. It's just not something we could have done in six months. So, but we've got the bases in, and now we're going to continue with that. Hmm. Joe, you got any uh, any new questions, or should I move on to the next one? Um, to be honest, that question just stole the next one I had. I was going to ask about um, <laughs> unified Unity, but um, I mean, how related to that? Because obviously, there's going to be some criticism uh, of twelve ten yeah. from people who are using that. I mean, how how um, what's what I'm looking for? How do user concerns that are voiced? affect your priorities as a developer? I mean, they affect them in the sense that it sucks to have to say to someone, okay, you know, your laptop doesn't have, so, you know, actually the sad thing is it's worse than just your laptop doesn't support it. But it's actually, yeah, your hardware is great. It could totally run Unity, but the drivers are rubbish, so mm -hmm. you can't, you know, and that's the worst thing to have to say to someone. But um, if we needed a jump off point where, say, we needed two cycles to come and bring it to the same level as what 2D was, then after an LTS was the best time for that. You know, unless if at least people who are st uh, still using uh, like Unity 2D or something and that gives them the best performance, at least they can stick with an LTS, they get updates, et cetera, et cetera, and we've got a chance. You know, we need more than six months. So it's, it's always difficult. One, you always want to get stuff done within another cycle and not have a time when someone's suffering because there's just so much of a workload or a decision that's been made, but sometimes it leaks out and you just have to do it over two cycles. So, yeah, I mean, we hope to collect all those users again by 1304, <laughs> bring them back up to date with previews and things like that. So if you've got an older, older laptop that you know you needed 2D on, then probably your best bet is just wait till 1204, skip 1210, maybe come in at 1304. Yeah, I think 1304 you'll see some really good improvements in like performance and um, especially on those types, those type of hardware basically. Hmm. The thing is, is it's <laughs> you're never going to get it to a point where it's as good as software rendering, but I, I think I hope it's clear to people why um, you know, for instance, Qt5 also doesn't have software rendering. It's just, it's fully GL as well. So the problem is Q, you know, Q, the QML version of Unity would have gone down the same path. You know? right. They couldn't stick with the old Q all the time. They had to at some point move over to Q5. They would have been in the same boat. So that's why we, we made the decision now instead of continually developing two products. Mm, OK. All right, Lee Griggs asked, is the Ubuntu team going to do any work on trying to get the caps lock delay fixed in X? Do you know what that is? Because I don't. Uh, a big bug or a general Xism? Not sure. When I hit the caps lock, it's totally a bug in me. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, it seems like a pla platform issue. This uh, is also something from Unity developers, which you'll hear a lot. It's not our fault. It's to do GTK with GTK bug. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> um, but it's all right, because Lee set you up for the probably the best question you're going to hear all day. Your favorite question of all time. How long does it 
uh, predict that it will take to migrate Unity to Wayland? <laughs> um, See, best question. You. That's the best question you're gonna get all day. As if. Do people well, on the tube ask you that question and stuff? I was just wondering. <laughs> Sorry. No, it just seems like every time we do an on air, we get at least one Wayland question. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is so Wayland isn't special in the sense of its backend, the way you um, hook up into it or anything like that. And Nux is pretty. Um, Nux, which is the toolkit we use for Unity, that's pretty plain as well. It doesn't. Rec it's not tied to X in the way, for instance, some of the other ones are. So, it wouldn't take long to port it over. But you, there's a bigger task there. So, for instance, um, Unity obviously is tied to Compiz in the sense of we use Compiz to host the Unity components and to provide the experience that we want to provide. Going on to Wayland, now Wayland itself is the protocol. You have Weston, which is one of the compositors to show what, you know, to show it's working basically. But realistically, the, what they expect is you to write your own compositor. So it's literally saying, how long will it take to redo the entire window, window management experience inside a new compositor plus have Unity inside of it and some time. <laughs> so we could get the bits and pieces up and running, but to have the actual Unity experience is 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 a different thing, and it, you know, it'll take some time to do that. But for instance, um, things like the launcher, the dash, the panel, etc., they already run. So they run inside Compass, but we also make sure that they run um, by themselves. They're standalone components as well, and that's we've always done that from the start because we knew that you know X Compass, etc. That was one direction, but there's obviously, you have this, the direction of Wayland and other things as well. So we knew we had to move over at some point. We're not quite there yet, but I'm like, I'm excited to see, I think for 1210, they wanted to do it, but they didn't because they didn't have time or something. But I know the platform team wanted to get Wayland up as a system compositor, just nothing really inside. You still have compis, et cetera, but something at least onto the disk and around the entire system. So things like that will start helping us move towards that direction, I think. OK. So not in the next cycle or two. Um. <laughs> not that I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the long road to happiness. I mean, um, UDS is in a couple of weeks' time, right? Yeah. <laughs> We'll fix it between now and then. Jay Martin, 22790. I know the answer to this is not a direct Ubuntu question, but is Ubuntu working to squash Netflix fears about moving to Linux? Um, we don't really have any expertise expertise on Netflix here today. Um, I know Rick Spencer fielded that question last time, and I'll try to find you an older video. Um, but I didn't know Netflix had fears. Yeah, yeah. Like, Benjamin Crane just sent them an email like, a month ago, and they said no, definitely no. They gave no reason. It's like still waiting. We have no way of like saying yeah, we'll have Netflix in the few, in the next few cycles or or not. It's like it's an Netflix it's an Netflix issue. It's not a, a like a canonical Netflix relationship. It's more like internal issue of Netflix. Mm. And I can also remind you users that you can use your handy dandy built in Ubuntu Dash and just uh, watch Amazon Prime videos. <laughs> uh, and buy. Unless you are where me and Joey are. So, so does it not work in the UK? I was just curious. No. Really? No, and we have a lot of so, so it's like a DRM issue. So, like Netflix and Love Film uh, use Silverlight. Love Film used to use Flash and now they use Silverlight. And that means we can't run it. Oh, I'm about to. <laughs> That's over like with the DRM bits and pieces, not just like you can't use Moonlight or anything like that. Yeah, there, there was like a silver light version for Ubuntu. It was an open source mod, no, but it got discontinued. Yeah, yeah no. that. it's the DRM part. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, sorry, no, no real updates on the Netflix thing. Um, let's see. So what it... What it so you're you're going to where UDS is going to be for like a product sprint prior to UDS. Can you can you kind of talk? So what, what's going to be like on your mind as as you're as you're going there? So like you know we like you mentioned that you know there's still a lot of like 2D like the 2D migration thing needs to be like what are the main themes I guess 
Like, what's, yeah, what's, so, what's I mean, like on your radar when you get on the plane? You're like, dude, this cycle, I'm gonna bust this out. Yes, yeah, so, I mean it's it's concentrated on the next six months, right? Like a lot of Ubuntu is, you you concentrate on six month time. I mean the. There's lots of things. For instance, um, there's so much maintenance work to be done inside Unity store, you know? We landed the, the previews and things like that, but there's bugs, there's stuff that needs to be fixed, things that could be even nicer, more animations to add, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's like the technical debt that you pick up anyway, and um, I think it's one of, it's something which we really want to knock out for 1304. We really want to take a massive um, cut through the bug list and really get it down and within control. So that's one of the things which, at least on my mind and a few other people's mind, is like a glaring thing that we need to get done. Um, the LLVM pipe 2D issue as well. Uh, you know, it's the, outside of just people who don't have... Um, uh, laptops or drivers that can let them run Unity. You've got to think of even pe people with NVIDIA drivers or uh, ATI binary blocks. They, they need to be able to install those. So it's critical and it needs to be sorted out in the next six months as well. So those, those two are the main ones. But outside of that, um, there's, there's the things that we've learned from what we've added in as well. So there's bits and pieces about um, the shopping lens. There's previews in the sense of the way now, as I said, people like David Calais and et cetera are using them. We need to hear feedback and we need to change things so it's more flexible for them. Um, I know Ken's really excited about having Gwibber really shine inside the dash, so there's a ton of work to do there as well. Um, and outside of that, well, so actually for 1304, maintenance is one of those key things, but I think um, outside of just the maintenance aspects um, and like making things like LibreOffice tighter with Unity so it doesn't feel as flaky, et cetera, I think, you're, I think we want to, you know, HUD, Mark spoke about HUD at the UDS. He showed some of the things that he was at the last UDS, sorry, that he was excited about, et cetera. So you might see bits and pieces of that fall in. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it feels like the HUD didn't get a lot of love this cycle. I mean, it works for me. I use it every day. Yeah, but it needs to be taken to the next step, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I think things like that you start trickling in. But, I mean, you start seeing trickling in. But really, the week before UDS for us is to sync up with design. So we need to see all the cool stuff design have done and say, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, Unfortunately, it looks like Ivanka wasn't going to make it. So you're going to have to fill the time with, with what... <laughs> Uh, with what you're working on. Being um, a pretend designer, I could do that. <laughs> sure. Wear a scarf, etc. <laughs> okay, so I've got a question over here from Javito on RC. Um, he's asking, when the new Catalyst 12.9 will be released and when will it be added to a repos? Because at the moment, FGR or X drivers don't work with 12.10. Not sure. That's again. That's a platform team decision. Yeah. Not sure. Just, just out of curiosity. Not that I'm asking for a hardware recommendation, but what, <laughs> what, what hardware do you personally? Uh, yeah. Your so, um, Intel Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge are amazing. They're really, really good. And drivers are really good as well. Um, otherwise, Nvidia. Um, just. If, so the thing is, Sandy Bridge and Ivory Bridge will take you up to a certain point, and Unity will be nice, and a whole bunch of other things will be really, really nice. But if you're powering two, three massive monitors, and or you really want to play, like, I don't know, random games and things like that, NVIDIA is still, for me at least, they're, they're the best. So fortunately, you don't have any ATI driver... Personally, no, but I mean, the developers do. We bought, I mean, you know, we've given laptops and stuff with those troublesome chips and things like that. But when you're dealing with the fact that, for instance, that last question, just the driver hasn't been updated, that's a little bit out of our control. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even though, uh, we'll, we'll try to get Chris Van Hoof and or uh, Chris House Rogers on one of these on airs and kind of talk to people through the art of getting updated drivers. But um, but I was pretty excited when uh, Bryce Harrington recently posted that we're going to plan on on bringing some of these uh, drivers to stable releases, which means yeah. um, right before it's like, well, 
you can sort of get a new driver. You just have to update your entire operating system. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, actually, one of the things has been, I don't know if you've noticed, like before there used to be a ton of times when during the cycle it's like, okay, I mean, now we've got a new X and like everything breaks. Yeah. <laughs> For like a week. It used to be less and less now. I think every, well, touch wood, but it seems that all that side seems to be way more stable than it used to be. Yeah. Like before it used to be massive changes and you couldn't really update the NVIDIA binary because you'd need a brand new X and how do you give that to people who already have? Yeah. You know, we've got an LTS, but now it seems to be way more flexible. Yeah, if you're not following along on platform, the development team now actually does the uploads into a PPA. And if it's like a, a major change, it goes into a separate PPA, then into a staging PPA, and then to do Ubuntu plus one. So Ubuntu plus one doesn't break for like, remember it used to break for like a week? Like yeah, no, yeah. Like, can you print? No, I haven't been able to print for like two weeks, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So that, that's at least not happening anymore. Um, guess ass, looks like an elementary OS fan. Is Just one question for you. From a four years Ubuntu user, do you consider the opportunity to drop Unity and use elementary OS desktop? So I know we've had the elementary guys over over to UDS and stuff, and we hang out with them and stuff. Can you kind of yeah. talk about the relationship there? I mean, obviously, Unity isn't going to go away. Sure. Uh, I think it's a good, it's a healthy relationship. I mean, when there was no, I would, you know, I made AWN when there was already task managers and things like that. It was, but I thought, okay, this is different. It's worth doing. And I wouldn't say t just because Unity is here now, I wouldn't tell anybody else not to do that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think they're even using Docky. Like Jason was, you know, he's, he developed the launcher and, mm -hmm. you know, he wrote Docky as well. So, I mean, I think that's fine. The relationship, I feel, is pretty good. Like we, we chat a lot at UDS. I, I love that the apps that they create. Like, I'm a sucker for nice apps, and I just, the type of stuff that they do, Daniel, his design, and the engineers, the work they do is amazing. So mm -hmm. I think it's important either way. Those apps will run, I hope, they'll continue to run well inside uh, Ubuntu, and I don't think we do anything specifically to um, affect elementary in any way or another, you know? Like, it, in a sense, in a bad way. What we do is pretty consigned to Unity's experience, and what they do is in their experience. But um, I think the ideals are quite similar. We, you know, we see something that Ubuntu or we see something that Linux could be, mm -hmm. and it's fine to have two, three ways of doing that. Same thing with Shell, uh, GNOME Shell. It's fine to have a few ways of doing that. Hopefully, the main thing is something succeeds, and you know, we move to that level. Mm -hmm. You talked about being a sucker for good apps. What are your favorite apps? Lately, what do you what are you rolling with? What's your desktop look like? Ah, uh, what is it? So, hold on. Okay, so I don't have anything useful on this laptop, but um, there was a new app just now uh, on OMG that I was looking at, which I needed to try out. <laughs> there was, um, I think, there's the, the, something won the competition, which was uh, a reader type app. Um, like read. Yeah. I think that's really, really nice. I love uh, what the Shotwell guys are doing with the Mail app. Um, forgotten the name, I'm sorry. Gary. I, Gary. I, was, I was, yeah, I was hoping it would be app get installable, and I was. Yeah, I think, and I don't think it is as yet, is it? Yeah, it's I just made that. You said it's kind of not ready to be. Okay, yeah, but I mean, I, see that direction. It's just awesome seeing that type of development and moving in that direction. A little bit of minimalism. Um, but still having like classy looking user interfaces and things like that. Um, and just even, to be honest, even the little things still like make me happy. Like I just, the weather app, just the little thing that sits on your desk. I think it was using icons by someone, climber icons or something like that. I just saw an OMG a few days ago. And just, that's important. You know, that's actually, for me, it's like, that's p part of our personality from years ago as well. Those little things, those little docklets, desklets, all of that stuff. We kind of lost that in the middle, and I think it would be good. I think it's an easy way for people to get into development, and, but it's also nice things which, like, just delight. It's like, sorry, it's a delight having them on your desktop, etc. Because mm -hmm. that's where you got to start, right? Just writing another doc. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I think we've <laughs> lost some of that. Like, I think there's too much weight put on, you know, like a no map has to be like this, an Ubuntu Unity app has to be like this, et cetera, et cetera. Go do what you want. Just make something that looks awesome and that works awesome, and that's fine. <clears throat> okay. Right. 
Um, Daniel Holbeck is asking if you can talk a bit about automated testing in the Unity world. Sure. Um, so, all right. So we've got um, so Unity is superbly complex because of the way it's inside comp is it dealing with it's dealing with applications as well as X as well as the window manager etc 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 so it's in a really weird place inside the stack which makes testing a complete annoyance um, you've got so we do unit testing etc of all the backends to make sure that they're you know we don't have regressions there etc but the thing that we're the most I guess proud of but also gives us the most headache is something called autopilot and what autopilot does is we've made unity completely introspectable um, so you can basically go into any random part of Unity, whether it's one of the icons on your panel or just an icon on the launcher or a part of the dash, etc. And you can introspect it for like something basic like geometry, where, the, where is it on the screen, but also its actions, its properties, etc. Now what Autopilot does is it combines that with real life scenarios, like you've started Firefox, you've started Chrome, are they appearing in the launcher? When you do Alt-Tab, are they showing up in the uh, switcher, et cetera? So Autopilot sits in between and actually automates normal desktop tasks. So like, for instance, um, say, for instance, you had a bug in Unity where the topmost application wasn't showing its window controls. When we fix that now, we also add an Autopilot test, so we catch it if there's ever a regression there. And what it just means, uh, Autopilot is a good three hours to run these days, but it just gives us a uh, backup in the sense that you can't always make sure when you commit something that you're not breaking anything else. So Autopilot is our backup tool there, just to make sure everything's set. And um, what happens is now, whenever you commit to Unity, um, say you have a merge proposal that's accepted. First, we do code reviews on every merge that goes into Unity and all of its um, anything it depends on really that we produce. But on top of that, uh, before it's committed, we have an auto lander which runs all the unit tests, and then we also run autopilot tests once a day just to make sure we're we're not nothing slipped in or anything. You know. Uh, it would be nice to run autopilot on every merge, but that time would be way, you know, three hours is way too much. So once a day is fine, we can catch something, whatever. So if, you, if you're crazy, you'd, you would be using Unity staging PPA, and that's got literally trunk of everything, and it breaks every now and then. But it's actually, that's where everything is built as we land on a per, um, per commit basis, basically. Wow, that's... I didn't. I didn't know you were a guy. So what? Like, what happens if this thing breaks? Do you? Well, you in the middle of the night, and I, like I envision, like. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it always manages to break right when we're meant to be doing a release. So it's really, <laughs> it's really annoying. But um, so yeah, autopilot. Just because of where it is and the kind of stuff it has to do, it's a bit too shaky still, and we need it to be way more robust. So it's um, that's one of actually that's a good point. So the quality section of the of thirteen oh four is huge. So you, I talked about maintenance, but we also want to take the the level of QA to the next level, basically. Um, and there's we need to make you know building Unity for a per commit basis faster. We want the mergers to be faster to be able to report test results quicker. We want it so developers, even if if they're you know. Even if it's the worst day for the, d the developer, something along the line is going to make sure that that branch doesn't land, basically, and lets the developer know what's wrong, etc. Autopilot's one of the things. So what I'd love to see is if we got Autopilot to a point where it's nice and robust, um, realistically, it's not tied to Unity. Unity's fulfilling a Dbus interface, you know? So it could hopefully help other applications as well in the future. So it's like a spec that if your application supports this spec, you can start writing autopilot tests and you can run them inside like a VM or something like that and have full on regression testing across your application, which would be, I think, amazing. So, re so really, you're just only getting started as far as a test, like, like yeah. percentage wise, where, where are you now where you think you, you ought to be? Um, it's different for the different projects. <clears throat> I think the length, one of the uh, we don't have good test coverage on the lenses, 
and it's a problem which we're going to solve this cycle. Like, we need a nice test harness, which isn't, you know, it's no point us t testing the JSON to, you know, linked list converted. There's no, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Um, in the same way, it's no point us retesting LibUnity. So the lenses testing have been a bit awkward, but we hope to get that done. But I mean, um, Unity, like all the foundational bits of Unity, are well enough tested. Um, well, not well enough. They're well tested. They need to be done more. So we're at like between 60 and 75, 80%, and we want to get them over 80 towards 90 by the end of um, next year. All the new li libraries that we're writing, they are, um, they're tested from day one, basically. So really what we're doing is from the stuff we've already written, we're just bringing it up to scratch, but everything we're starting from new, you know, there's a certain policy where it has to be highly tested. Mm. I, I also have, um, so those of you listening, feel free to just post a question on UbuntuOnAir.com and um, we'll, we'll go ahead and forward it to Neil. We're down to 15 minutes, so get them in before we end. And uh, while we wait on those, Neil, I, I kind of want to ask you, so I got a lot of flack for uh, a few cycles ago for proposing getting rid of a certain tool that was broken that I'm not going to mention. Um, but the thing is, like, people what want... Tool? What tool? <laughs> but people want to be able to like customize a little bit more than yeah. than you know than what we give them. Can you talk? So I know that we've shifted Compass and Unity now use G settings. Yeah. So is, is that more robust now? Like because before you were going there, and if you if you checked the wrong box, it was like like yeah, it just <laughs> literally would blow up in your face. Um, yeah. So even the you know, tool is more robust you now. Break it, you get to keep both pieces, but at the same time. People want to tweak, or, like I know it's kind of like a like a like a like the tweaker kind of crazy yeah. cubes and things like that. Or obviously we don't support those, but like, um, can you talk a little about the fragility of like the configuration system? Yes. Yeah. So doing? I mean, it's I see it mostly. Um, so I think it's important, right? But we could be clever about that. Like for instance, the tool that we that not. You know, say the name of, um, that we made it more robust by not allowing it to switch off the Unity plugin, for instance, or right. not allowing you to set something that will switch off. Now, hey, if you want to do things like that, you can happily open up another, another session that doesn't have that inside of it and go crazy, basically. Mm -hmm. It's just for the majority of users accidentally finding themselves because they've read something somewhere into, um, into a position where suddenly Unity is not starting. It's just... It's not good user experience, right? right? So we, I think we closed the gap on that one. The the main problem is is so Comp is is a beast in that sense, right? It lets you do anything, and Unity in Comp is isn't special. It's just like anything else. So you may want water drops on your screen, but and in Comp is it's like I totally need to switch off Unity for this. It doesn't understand that Unity is like core to the experience. It will just go and let you do that. So we added those bits and pieces, and but. Realistically, um, I, I mean, think because there's a lot of unmaintained garbage in there too. Well, so. this is the thing. Like, there's. Um, I think what you'll see over the next uh, few releases of Comp is, is some of that moved out into an extras library, just because that's truthful to what it is. The core developers are not sitting there trying to make those uh, plugins still work. And if, hey, if you want to, you can go in and just update them as needed. But for instance. Um, getting Compass to work fine on uh, GLES a few cycles ago, um, you, you know, you're, upgrade, you're updating things, as I said, like the water drops plugin or like the fireball plugin. And like, that's just not good develop, that's not good use of developer time basically, you know? So I think you'll see, what I, what I hope to push through and what I think we'll see is Compass become way more lean and then that binding back into Compass, we make it much more stricter. So it's not like you couldn't have the droplets, you totally do that. But what it means is that when you write that plugin, you do have to adhere to some rules. So it just means to say that you don't go and trample on Unity or you don't go and trample on the multi-touch experience or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's just making that entire interface like grown up. Right. I'm so stoked to hear that. Um, uh, a few weeks I'm ago, I was having discussion about something very, very similar, saying that compass should just kind of clear the junk, keep what's needed. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think that's the sanest thing for the development team as well. It's just, you know, 
it just gives gives them a problem which is manageable. They can you know continue on it every cycle and they can totally do it. And what it means is their efforts are on making that API robust and then let, letting somebody do whatever they want to do, which is fine. And I mean, it's not just for those plugins. Unity will have to adhere by the exact same API. You know, and we'll have to do whatever we need to do to make sure we don't trample on another plugin as well, which I think we're better at now. But I know that we can still do that accidentally. So, yeah, that's why I just tell people don't, 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 don't mess with your window manager. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> Stay Two away. Don't mess with your boot manager and your window yeah. manager. Don't mess yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. For the sake so, of clarity, you you were referring to to uh, Compass Config Settings Manager, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Sam. I don't care. I get, I get, I still get hate mail about that. I don't <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm waiting Sam for my my Unity. So out of for twelve oh four, I really like my Unity because it seemed pretty safe. It yeah. like, toggled mm -hmm. stuff, and he only really exposes stuff. But apparently for twelve ten, um, he hasn't updated that due to the G settings. Right. I'm kind of yeah. hoping so, for that. Tools like my Unity, they're not. See, they don't go in and start messing around with like the very core compass bits and pieces. What they're doing is they're exposing settings that we're generally exposing, but maybe not with a UI. In the default UI. Exactly. Right. Or they're just they're playing with things which they've obviously tested and made sure is okay to enable yeah. with Unity. Which is fine. I think having great, yeah, is great. tweak tools is great, but yeah. I, having a tweak tool that's destructive, like the raw CCSM is what really mm. yeah. The kitchen sink. But I think I think I might be wrong, but I think maybe Ubuntu Tweak might be updated for Unity and G settings. Okay. You know about that, Joey? Uh, no, I don't really track Ubuntu Tweak. Um, okay. Well, either way, they'll probably they'll probably be updated soon enough. So. Yeah. Actually, the other thing about Comp is that some of the core modules um, were they treat themselves as optional. So, like window management is a module rather than something that's built in no matter what. So that's another place where having that built in from scratch and having that not switch offable right. <laughs> is probably a good idea, you know, like the ability to move windows. <laughs> the kernel is like that too. It gives you the option to whether you want to turn on keyboard support or not. It's like, why is that a module? I don't know. It was designed to be modular. That's just how it is. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, module is great and applications should be designed like that, but there's core functionality as well. And at least inside the Unity session, we'll make sure that the core functionality doesn't accidentally be switched off. That sounds pretty awesome. Okay, so we have time for one or two more questions. Let's see if we have any more. Anyone coming in? Any from IRC? Jose, you got any any going on there? Any questions? No, no questions in RC. RC is basically dead. Where is everyone today? I'm not sure. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's the time. It's okay. I mean, sometimes a lot of people show up. Uh, sometimes a, a few people just get uh, get to hog you. Um, so Neil, how much of a because um, people always tell me that comp is is resource hungry. How much yeah. of a performance hit is comp is? Uh, comp is isn't isn't that bad. It's mostly if they're seeing any hits, it's most likely with Unity than anything else. To be honest. So Compass had its issues, and we went through them, and we um, fixed those up. And it's Unity's turn from now. Well, from this cycle, basically. Um, so you, you should have seen improvements there anyway. Um, and there's just more to come. Um, so when people were blaming Unity, they should have been blaming Compass. And now they're blaming Compass. They should be blaming, blaming Unity. Unity. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. This is the problem with going hand in hand with everything. Yeah. yeah everything is so, just your fault at some point. It's like. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we're the, we're, I mean, when you blame me, though, we have to deal with it because, you know, we have the guys right. developing Compass with us. They're our team, right? But yeah. it's just, if you're talking about component level, then at the moment, Compass is great. Unity is the one drag, dragging it down on certain systems. So we need to get Unity up to speed on those systems. Yeah, and you always get the blame because you're the new change, right? My wireless stopped working. It did yeah. last time. I hate Unity. Basically, right? <laughs> <laughs> we do have one great question from Alessandro who says, thanks for answering his question about elementary OS. Another great question. What's up with the spread? You guys showed really <laughs> oh, awesome yeah. stuff. What is up with that? I totally forgot about Thank you, Alessandro. I you thought you were going to get out of here without talking about the spread. 
it's Jason's fault for like you know deciding to leave. I think uh, <laughs> he should totally. You know, it was all on his head. Should have totally done it. So, so I mean, so the spread's the still spread? there. I think it has some. I think it has some really good functionality, which I don't think many other OSs do. So it's just about finding um, development. I, I don't, like John, for instance, John Lee, who's in charge of the desktop Unity. Design. He's just popped out. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, dude, it's like six twenty-five here. They're all gone for beers. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so uh, they, for instance, he really wants to see it in. It's just about finding um, developer time to get it in there. And personally, with the spread, I love it. But I think it's also something which I feel is going to take a couple of cycles to, before everyone doesn't, or well, everyone likes it. You know, I have this feeling where we're going to upset a whole ton of people as well. So I'd, what I'd like to see is for the, it to be developed. Um, the nice thing is it can be just developed as its own plugin, <laughs> talking about plugins to Compass, um, and enabled, and just people could start testing it. So I'd love to see it in a PPA soon. But um, for 1304, personally, it feels like it's a change which requires input, you know? Mm -hmm. um, people's, the way people work with workspaces, et cetera, and just generally like that, I think it's, they hold it dear to their hearts. Like there's a certain workflow which the minimalism that we have now lets you just do, whereas the spread really puts you into a certain way of working. So I'd like to see what people come back on that with. Very interesting. Good answer. Plus, I, I kind of want to like leave you guys alone just to do the maintenance and the streamlining and the performance and the quality stuff. Yeah. And be like... Yeah, I think. I mean, we've got a ton on our plate already. Always do right but <laughs> for this cycle. But I, I just the maintenance. Yeah, I hold dear. I really just want to see that bug list cut down. And you know, things we've landed. I just want them. To, I want to. There's so much cool stuff there. I want it to come to completion, you know, and people yeah. to be like, for the engineers themselves to be proud of that they got it to that point. But I think the users will just love it more. Mm, that is really excellent. Well, it looks like we're out of time. Thanks for taking some of your beer drinking time to, uh, are, are, you, are you in the Bluefin office, the new canonical uh, office? Yeah, I am. How is it? I heard it's all like sweet. It's so nice. Like there's like orange and purple everywhere. And like the right, the right Pantone colors as well. It's like, I'm in the design section. So actually where I am, it's messy. Like our designers are really messy. There's like paper everywhere. And it's just, yeah. But on the other side, it's really nice. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay, Joey, Jose, um, any final comments? Um, I just did want to ask Neil one more thing. Ooh, and that was, right. at the beginning you said that, uh, previews had been sort of in mind for a while but are now only sort of existing is there anything that's in mind now that will exist in the future that like you can't say but is there well i mean i think the one i mentioned the thing is um if you take the dash as it is um uh the the way the previews work you could see that there's tweaks though that needs to be done with regards to just how you deal with the different actions, that you know, how the information is presented so it's easier to capture, etc. So there's I think there's a whole other revision of the previews, plus some extra ones. I think um, some some of the out internally as well as the community have pointed out that we could have certain previews which are so much nicer than you know what we have now. So just treating each type, like media type, etc., in a very special way. Like we do that for the music, but maybe not perfectly for the photos and things like that. So I think there's a thing there. But is really, I think... Uh, is it possible to have um, uh, video previews in the dash? Yeah, actually, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's part of what nice meant to land this cycle. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's what I mean. So I think those are the things where if we had a cycle of maintenance, we'd check all the boxes on the design. Mm -hmm. So if you ask the designers, that's what they wanted, and the engineers just didn't have time to get it done. Um, other than that, um, I think what I mentioned about the HUD, you know, Mark's, what he presented at UDS was really cool and really different and really unique. It's like, it's a personality of Ubuntu. It could be Ubuntu's personality. So bringing it, taking it there would be a really good thing. It's a good power user thing. By the way, you mentioned music previews. I just wanted to say a little sliding progress bar on the music <laughs> and the preview. Whoever did that, that was, that's my coolest. I keep trying to drag that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I did follow that bug, though, because it looks all really nice, and I get jamming with my song, and then I close the dash, and the music stops. I don't like that. Yeah. We've always needed, like, uh, music as a service on the Ubuntu desktop, haven't we? It's just no one managed yeah. to really nail that. Yeah, I felt the bug. I'm basically making it more Cubase. Remember when music players weren't Cubase? Like, it was just weird. Now it's just like, you know, search and then queue it up, queue it up, queue it up. Yep, 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 exactly. Especially with, like, the sound menu and things like that. You don't uh -huh. need that much of an interface anymore, right? Yeah. <clears throat> we need to clone you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jose, you got any final words? Okay, please remember to follow Adam on on Twitter. We'll be posting all our dates in new sessions over there. Um, I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching us. Okay, and everyone enjoy the release of 12.10 tomorrow. Neil, yeah. take a day off. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You know I'm lying. <laughs> okay. okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.